Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming, and of course more Diablo 4. Today though, I've got a discussion for you, a kind of review of that new event, the pinnacle challenge for Season 2, the Abattoir of Zir, aka those Bloodforged Dungeons. Wow, people have been aggressively negative about this event, and to be honest, I'm not a fan of it myself, and there's many reasons for that. One obvious reason is that we're playing an online game that seems to have constant latency, so those attacks that you dodge in that 0.5 of a second, they still often hit, and that is a problem, especially when you're dealing with mobs that aren't really meant to be scaled up to this insane level, because they auto-attack you and you die. Those berserkers, for example, that leap to you, hitting you with an unavoidable attack, instant death. If you don't have literal iframes active, a lot of enemies are going to kill you. So the solution is to be permanently invincible, which doesn't feel all that skill-based to me. Now, outside of those obvious issues, which, you know, you could argue for with different takes, this was actually something I expected before the launch. I was talking about in a video before the event went out, where I predicted that the event would create sort of an uproar of negative reactions. I figured it would cause drama, and that was largely because it's designed not only for the best geared players, but also the most adaptable, not people who pick someone else's pre-made build and stick to it forever, which I think is a lot of people. Personally, my first day with the event was tough. As a necromancer, I'm watching barbs and sorcerers and even rogues sort of force their way casually through the tiers where I really struggle as a necromancer. It's clear that necromancer can't tank the same hits as the other classes, and at the same time, it's also dealing way less damage than your barbs or sorcerers. But let's try to be positive about this. I shouldn't really be comparing myself to other classes that are simply stronger than mine in Season 2. I should be comparing myself to other necromancers what's actually possible for me. So I followed those rules. I really worked to maximize my bone spear build that I prepped beforehand, planning what I would do and how I would change it depending on what I need. And I did that. I reworked gear to have more defensive affixes. I changed a few aspects. I changed my skill tree twice and I reworked my paragon board. Ultimately, I came up with something that maximized my potential at the time where I felt I was the strongest I could possibly make it for that specific content. I was excited to make a build video about this. And isn't that what the event's all about? Exactly that concept, adapting for the challenge. The result was that I cleared a tier 5 barely by cheesing the Bloodseekers with a shrine buff, otherwise it would have been impossible. I was not satisfied with that, I was more disappointed and frustrated. The skill was in making a build that's the best for the content, and then, you know, timing a shrine basically. So next I accepted that the Bone Spear build is, while much better DPS than my other option, it's just not going to get me there. It can't survive. I might dominate the mob clear with that DPS, but when I get to the Bloodseekers, they're too broken in RNG, so it's not possible. So, for the damage avoidance I'm going to need, it meant I had to go Infinite Miss build, which I swapped around to make a max DPS version, somewhat Pentadot style, and cleared a tier 6 just barely. That was day 1 of the event, and to be honest, not much has changed since then. Leveling the Glyph is painfully slow, but it'll increase the DPS slightly, which is what's holding this build back, since it's much lower DPS compared to Bone Spear. The result of leveling it is basically the ability to clear one, maybe two tiers higher, without stopping to go get some uber uniques or something. I've not enjoyed that experience that I've just described. It was very disheartening to eventually learn that I've pushed my build options as far as I can and now it really just comes down to I need XP into a glyph and I need more uber uniques. So what am I going to do? Farm durials or just farm the dungeons for glyph XP? Maybe I'll have to do both. The thing is, the next tier is going to be the exact same tier as the tier before and the tier before that. Nothing actually changes. And you know, there's no reward or reason to do this. Do you really think I'm going to farm durials another 400 times to get my next uber unique? Or sit through tier 1 and 2s to farm glyph XP for hours and hours to ultimately get a 2% damage increase? I am not doing that, it's not for me, and I think it's not for a lot of people. Now let's take a quick look at the rankings via maxroll.gg, who have their own leaderboard system to see how things are ranking up. Currently, as I make this video, there has been two tier 20s, complete by teams of three. Both players we're referencing are barbarians though. Then we have the highest solo in the fastest time, a tier 19 by a sorcerer who shockingly only had nine levels in their tiers of blood, compared to the level 15 to 20 tiers of blood glyphs of the other ones I just mentioned. Arcuid, who I hope I pronounced right, cleared the tier 19 in a short shocking 8 minutes and 4 seconds, and seems to basically not lose any health from the insane incoming damage. So they're basically invincible and dealing a lot of damage, and that is basically what you need to do to beat the higher tiers it would seem. In any case, the listings are essentially roughly 60% barbarians, followed closely by sorcerers, then you got some rogues, and then less necromancers and druids by comparison. If it wasn't clear then, barbarian and sorcerer are the obvious winners of this content, which 
comes as no shock because they were also the strongest class generally in the Season of Blood. But it does come as a shock to me that Necromancer and Druid are so much further behind the other classes. And you know, Rogue would probably not stand a chance too if it wasn't for their breaking combo points thing this season. Alright, so I've put across to you my expectations and personal experience and how the rankings are standing currently. What was the community response? Like I said, it was massively negative, and that birthed the popular post by Reddit user Belial. Belial made this post titled, The Hard to Swallow Pill This Community Needs to Swallow. In short, Belial states that despite the very negative reaction to the event, he thinks the response is somewhat unjust, explaining that the event was made for the sweatiest of sweat lords, not casuals who never really stood a chance anyway. Stay that if you can't even beat the first tiers, it's probably you and your build that's the problem, not the mode itself. You should be adapting your build, not using the default one that you've used for most of season two. You need to be willing to adjust your gear and playstyle for that content. It's meant to be stupidly difficult, and it is. Designed for the top percent of the player base for completely min-max builds only. That the majority of us are not meant to even get far in this content, and even the best of the best aren't probably meant to beat it fully. The thing is, while Belial in many cases there is right, it is designed to be extremely hard for max level maximized builds, including uber uniques and so on. And further, it's also true that you need to be adaptable. You shouldn't expect to beat it with a normal build. While all true, I think the issue Belial is maybe ignoring is how far this has gone and how it's gone a bit too far in that case. I've done all of that. I was the theory crafter trying to work out my best options and sharing that with others, and I had two planned. My two main builds that I changed in multiple ways, both of them, weren't strong enough to progress at a certain point. Bone Spear can't survive, and Pentadot doesn't have enough DPS at a certain tier where the enemies have so much health. So it hard caps my potential to how much I level the glyph or maybe get more uber uniques. At a certain point then, it's disappointing and frustrating to find that I'm not solving a puzzle anymore and I'm not outplaying any mechanics. I'm just farming XP at a very slow rate or farming uber unique drops again for another 100 hours or hey both. I think that post ignores a lot of the valid criticism for the event. You get a tiny amount of XP for the glyph leveling. Way too little if they truly expect us to reach level 50, let alone the 200. And then there's the fact that there's no real reward beyond leveling the glyph. Why aren't we getting uber unique drops in there? like increased odds based on the level of the Bloodforge. That makes complete sense. It's the end of the season anyway. Clearly it's designed to need them. Who cares if most people actually finally get to use an Uber when we're going to reset in season three very soon. Let's put aside the painfully clear class imbalance where Barb and Sorcerer stands leagues above the others. And look at how the sigils themselves are super expensive on the powder to craft. So you're forced back down to farming tier one so you never have too little to even do this. Or worse, back to all content that provides nothing and barely any powder. Or the way that a variety of the enemies are clearly not meant to be scaled to this high level of DPS where they're one-shotting you with unavoidable damage, resulting in the only builds that actually beat this content being damage immune ones like that sorcery we looked at earlier. There's no skill in the gameplay at a certain point. Where's a combat log so we can see what killed us and why so we can do something about it? Which, you know, can we do anything about it? Why is there so much RNG in the Bloodsea graphics resulting in like a one in 10 chance that they're actually going to be killable or randomly like 10 tiers higher than the tier you just cleared in terms of difficulty. Look, there's a lot of issues with Diablo 4 and it is highlighted by this event more than anything we've seen so far. Maybe that's a big reason as to why the reaction has been this negative. Even if yes, people should expect to adapt and struggle, the concept is actually good. A final end of season true challenge for complete builds, awesome. A reason to keep playing, to farm ubers, to push your class to its limit. But that content still needs a reason to do it beyond that and one that ties into it. Like higher drop rates on maybe the rarer aspects in the game, as well as uniques and especially uber uniques. And big picture, Diablo 4 has issues with incoming damage of enemies in the form of unavoidable damage where they really shouldn't be scaled up like that for it to feel good. I'm not sure they're ever going to be able to fix that but they can fix some of the valid criticism. And you know, the devs actually agree. Adam Fletcher tweeted that the intense feedback they received is something they're highlighting and talking about. Seems they're taking it seriously this time. Do you remember how much feedback they ignored during the betas, the preseason, until eventually they got smashed by that terrible patch that basically nerfed fun and a lot of the player base just left? Well, after that, it's clear they won't ignore reactions of this scale again. And so they're actually implementing changes 
right away. The Glyph XP is going to be much better from tier 2 onwards, scaling massively as you get to the higher tiers, as it always should have. The literal busted affixes of enemies when you're scaling them up this hard are gone. Vampiric, where they generate infinite health, and Suppressors, which destroy many builds' complete ability to DPS, these have been removed from the Bloodseekers at the end. The raw damage is changing too. Clearly, the scaling of the tiers was too much, the ramp was too high, too fast. So as you work between tiers 1 and 10, you're going to have much less BS, much more re reasonable scaling and difficulty, but beyond tier 10, it'll be what it is now. But they are reducing all incoming damage by up to 20% through all the tiers, so that's going to make a huge difference. The patch that's doing this dropped December 8th, which is right as I make this video. So clearly they agree that while they had a concept for a purpose, they've gone too hard and too fast with it, it's overtuned. Some affixes don't work when scaled up, ruining a run instantly. The rewards were too low, and those have been improved. However, I would like to see more, like Uber Unique should have a high chance to drop in there, especially at the higher tiers. And in the future, maybe better class balance. But yeah, that's the discussion and the main topics I wanted to address. My experience, the community reaction, the two sides of, you know, is it too hard or should you be more adaptable? And the devs with their first reaction patch, which was fast, so credit to them. I think the concept is a good one and we do need something for the final bit of a season to encourage playing longer, to give those who have got those completed builds something to work with. It's just that the implementation was a mess and yeah, yeah, I expected it to be, that they needed to do this to test and learn and hopefully do a better job next time. So what do you guys think? Are you happy with the patch? Have you been trying the event? Let us know. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye